Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Billy Dunthorn and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different actually. I'm going to be running through my guitar rig and the setup I use when uh, I'm just rehearsing at home in my bedroom, when I'm rehearsing with a band, uh, when I'm recording and then also when we play live as well. So this rig does it all. Um, it's what I use for all four I suppose uh, practices and yeah I'm going to be going through everything really. So from my guitar, my pedal board to my amp. Um, all the accessories I use, how I record, when I do my guitar covers as well, um, and all the equipment I use. So I thought the way I'd do it is, we'll start off with my guitar, we'll then talk about my amp, and then we'll get to the fun part, which is the pedal board, because I think that's probably what everyone wants to see, really. So yeah, let's get into it. So first of all, um, this is my guitar in here. I just have this like Fender carry bag. It's pretty regular. I don't quite, I haven't quite got onto a hard cases yet because we don't really talk that much in the van so it doesn't really seem necessary all I want is just something that you know I can carry from sort of like my bedroom to the rehearsal studio really and uh, it's pretty lightweight so the guitar I have is this Fender Stratocaster I think it's a 2016 Mexican Strat yeah it's, it's class I've got this sort of like Fender strap on it as well it's quite flexible um, yeah this guitar cost me about 300 pounds um, I got this second hand and the reason I got the second hand was because I, I thought it's best to uh, if I'm going to spend £300 on a guitar then I'd rather get a second hand Fender than a brand new Squire um, and that's something I'll be talking about throughout the video as well some things I think it's best off investing in a, a new piece of equipment but yeah I mean this guitar is, is pretty good to be fair um, for the price it's exactly what I want I've had my fair share of Epiphones and my fair share of Squires and I just felt like I, I, need, I warranted sort of like something a bit more professional. We're all in the band now play Fender because I don't know, it just, I think it just suggests that you may be a little bit more professional, it just suggests that you're you're taking this a little bit more seriously. I don't know, it's probably me being pedantic and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with this. To be fair, this is everything I want. I wanted a guitar that I could do everything on when you know we play some sort of slow melodic stuff and we also do like higher, darker, sort of dirtier stuff as well and I wanted a guitar that done it all um, and it certainly does it. You've obviously, you probably all know how Stratocasters work but <clears throat> you've got the three single core pickups, five way switch system, your two tone knobs and your volume knob. Um, it's got the maple fretboard as well which is really important for me because there's bends you know. Um, but yeah, no, this is, this is a quality guitar to be fair. I think if you're going to spend, you know, this money on it, you, to get to be able to get a Fender Stratocaster for three hundred pound is is pretty good, and uh, I, I'd recommend it. Um, it does it all. I haven't got a, this is my only guitar that I use. I sort of bank on the fact that if anything goes wrong with it, then um, one of the other guitarists in another band will be able to like, lend me their guitar for a song or two. Um, I am hoping probably at the end of this year or early next year to, to pick up a, a Fender Jaguar, that's kind of like my dream guitar, um, but yeah, we'll have to see, I'm not sure if I'll be able to quite manage that yet, but the hope is that that would then be my main guitar and this would then just be like my backup and I would bring be bringing this to gigs, but um, no, I'm, I'm really happy with it, it's fairly lightweight, it's quite compact, um, and yeah, I, I use it for everything, I use it, it's the only one I use, I do have a few other guitars over there, but they've got so much dust on them now, I don't even bother playing them and uh, this is the only guitar I play. And then in terms of the strings, I just have these regular sling keys that, yeah, class me fair. Never really bother with anything else and I, just, I know these and know how they work so I, I just use them really. Um, I do have another guitar, I do have this Epiphone electroacoustic, but we don't really play this live if we're doing like a sort of an acoustic set which we, we do do from time to time. As a, couple of pickups at the bottom there. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think there's something in there. I think that's the end of the string, but. And then on my acoustic, I just use these. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see that. I think you find a pack of strings you like and then you sort of stick with it really. Uh, yeah, so moving on to my amp. Uh, I have a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. Uh, I did used to play a Vox AC15 VR. But I wanted a quite a significant upgrade. This amp will probably last me for like the next probably five to ten years. Um, if you're intermediate, semi-pro guitarist, whatever you want to call it, like not really beginner, but you're sort of playing in bands and, and you're, you're playing gigs and stuff, and you want a fairly decent amp, I think, I think you can't really go much. You can't go wrong with a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. Um, 
does everything I want. I, I, I run it clean and I add all the effects sort of like in, in my pedal board. Um, yeah, I think it cost me about 750 quid. Um, the reason I, I wanted an upgrade is just because like, I think I sort of ran the course of the Vox and I think, um, you know, it, it, I warranted an upgrade. Um, the only thing that really is frustrating with the Fender Hot Rod is it's just so heavy, like, honestly, it's ridiculous. Um, so if they could release a, a lighter model, that would be much preferred. But um, no, it's, it's, it's a quality amp. I, like I said, I used to have the Vox, but uh, I think I think I, I, I warranted the upgrade. And then from that, I just, <sighs> when I'm recording, I just have, Ooh. I should have an SM57, it's my mate, it's actually my bassist, but uh, you don't mind. And then we record, when I do like the guitar covers, just have this Scarlet Solo, focus right. I think it's pretty much like the best sort of dual interface you can get if you're gonna if you're gonna get one, so definitely recommend that. But yeah, the hot rod the hot rod's quality, um the only issue I've ever had with it is the tube, I believe, that blue once, which was frustrating, um, but thankfully it, I got this new, um, so I just took it down to PMT. We actually had a gig that next day, and I was like, help, um, because yeah, that would have been wouldn't have been ideal. But um, they just swapped it straight over, and that is probably the reason that I would recommend getting your amp new um, with a guitar. When you're getting a guitar second hand, pretty much if something goes wrong with it, you can probably figure it out. The only thing I wouldn't want to be messing around with is the, the pickups and the electronics. But the only thing that ever goes wrong with this is. Um, here this screw sometimes comes loose but I just stick a matchstick down it and it's fine but with that I, I really just wouldn't want to be like messing about with it until we uh, we undone the back of it and it was just like chaos I was like I'm not messing around with that so I thought I'd leave that but if you're gonna get an amp I'd, if you can I'd try and get it new because if anything does go wrong with it then um, you have the ability to just take it to the store and just like they'll probably just swap, swap it over or, or give you a new one and sort it out so yeah, shout out to the guys at PNT Norwich for that because uh, yeah, that really saved my bacon there. I suppose this is probably the bit you will want to see, um, my pedal board. Uh, let's get to it. So this is my pedal board, this is a Donna DB3. Um, I'll just show you the back of it quickly. It's fairly compact um, and it also comes with this carry bag, which is fairly handy as well. I think this is about 40 pounds for all this and it comes with Velcro and stuff and it has this pouch and this handle and these like rubber stamps which helps it as well it's just sort of put velcro around the sides of it <coughs> and then in terms of the power pack in terms of the power pack i just have this this is what it's called k9 gain power 5 i'm not sure i think it was about this is about 20 pounds for the power pack and i think the, the pedal board was about 40 so it's, it's fairly good and then the leads, what I have is going into my uh, Tudor. I have a, I think it's a 10 foot Fender, 10 foot Fender one. Um, and then out of it, it is a 25 foot, I think. And the reason that is because when I'm playing live, I don't want to be spreading over like my, my cable. And I just have that, my guitar tech just has that all the way around, which is well handy. Um, and then yeah, I just don't, I don't have to stand on that at all. It's nowhere near me and it's right around the side of the stage. So the first pedal on my board is my chromatic tuner. This is a Beilinger TU300. Um, yeah, this cost me about 15 pounds from the second hand land. And uh, the reason this is still on my board is because it does the same job as any other tuner pedal. It, you know, you can spend 60, 70 pounds on the tuner pedal, but it's gonna do the same thing. Still got the, uh, I don't know if you can quite, I don't know if you quite see that, but still got a second hand land sticker on it. and. Uh, Bit of residue on the front there as well but um yeah it's kind of like a this is the first one that pedal i've got in it i kind of feel like i want this to stay on my board as long as possible just to sort of like remind me <laughs> when i first started playing really then we've got the uh, compressor so i've got a boss cs3 compression sustainer um not really a, a major fat reason as to why i decided to go with this mainly because the, the main reason was really um the sustain option which is really handy for those sort of elongated notes uh, when we play sort of the, the, the slower stuff but yeah i mean it just sort of like tie, ties it all quite nicely I, I can't really imagine playing without a compressor now um it just makes you sound like a better player because if you do hear sort of like a bummy note like it just it ties it all together quite nicely um that's at the top there so the compressor 
is going into uh, the Tube Screamer. I've got Ibanez Tube Screamer Mini. Um, I think this is like the second pedal I bought actually. And yes, an overdrive pedal. It does what it says on the tin, I suppose. Um, all I really use this for is to sort of boost my signal for those solos and stuff, predominantly when I'm playing um, the distortion pedals. And it, yeah, it just gives you, I suppose it just puts you higher up in the mix when you, know, you want those solos to uh, be a little bit more prominent. Next, I have the MXR Prime Distortion. Uh, got that sort of 70 sort of raw distortion feel or sound rather um, to this, the, the pedal. Got this because at the time, Mick Ronson, David Bowes guitarist, and also Nick Valenci, the Strokes guitarist, uh, use similar pedals or similar sort of sounds uh, in their songs. And uh, I really like that raw feel. Um, and if I want something a little bit more crunchier, a little bit more heavier, maybe a bit more dirtier, um, I usually use these little more bassy notes, so I've got the uh, Electro Harmonics Nano Big Muff, uh, the, the standard Big Muff, but I don't really see the point when you can get this nice compact unit that fits quite nicely um, onto the board and breaks up quite nicely with the tone knob. The sustain knob can be a little bit more can be a little bit more problematic at times, which is frustrating. So you just got to work out how to use it. Um, but no, it, it's really good and it just makes it just different, gives you an option to differentiate between the two pedals but they're my overdrive and distortion pedals and I have these in the bottom row just so I can sort of flick them on easily and I'm not sort of stepping over any of the pedals. Um, so that is then going into the Super Chorus CH1, this is the Boss uh, Chorus pedal. Um, you can get a load of, of different chorus pedals, our, our, our rhythm guitarist and singer, he has a, I think it's called a Boss Chorus Ensemble and that is just class but that was about £100 more so I just went for the uh, Boss Super Chorus. Probably will experiment maybe a little bit with the chorus pedals from time to time when I have a little bit more money I can I maybe might invest in a few others and see what I prefer but for the time being um, this this one's really good. Uh, yeah there's a lot of chorus pedals out there and chorus is quite prominent in my sound I use it quite a lot it's pretty much on all the time apart from one or two songs so yeah happy with that at the moment. I suppose this is the probably the, this is probably the party trick pedal if you like. Um, this allows me to. I usually only use this when uh, the rest of the band drops out of the song, and I'm sort of just playing uh, for a brief moment or two on my own. And it just sort of pans from speaker to speaker really nicely. And uh, if the sound system's good, then it, it it really works. But it's just got the the t the, the one knob and the uh, collar switch as well. So. Um, it's a nice compact pedal and uh, for about £30 I think I got that for so it's a pretty good bargain. Next up is the Digital Delay DD7, probably all heard of this pedal before. I've had a few delay pedals, this is undoubtedly the best one, although I'm not quite uh, there on figuring it all out. It is, as you can see you have a lot of options going on there in the top right hand corner with all the milliseconds and the different types of delay. I think I found the, the style I like, um, I just sort of use it to sort of back up, almost make me sound like uh, two guitars at once in the sense of I have another guitarist playing alongside me. Um, and it just sort of beefens my sounds up and, and doubles it up, especially when uh, you know you're the only sort of lead guitarist in the band. If you like, it just makes you yeah stand out a little bit more and be a little bit more prominent. Next, I have the reverb pedal. Got a TC Electronics Sky Surf reverb. Not really a sort of major reason as to why I've got this. Um, there are a few reverb pedals out there. I've got my eye on maybe to one day upgrade to. Uh, but for now, I think this is fine. It's got free setting. You've got the spring, the plate, and the hall, and it's just nice and compact. Um, I did used to have a Marshall, a Marshall reverb pedal, but um, that was a little bit too complicated in all sorts of settings, and I just wanted something that was that was nice and simple. So I went for the uh, TC, TC Electronic Sky Surfer reverb, and then from that, I have uh, yeah, certainly the biggest pedal on my board. This is predominantly for uh, sort of rehearsing at home and sort of ex experimenting and, and sort of improving my playing I suppose. I use this a lot for sort of uh, going over chord progressions and, and using scales and stuff and it, it's really beneficial for that. Um, my sister gave this to me because she wasn't using it and I've sort of stuck it on here it's just so I can, you know, I'm not putting it back on uh, when I'm just rehearsing really on my own. I don't really use this live too much. Um, we have experimented with the uh, drum beat setting on that when we're doing like, acoustic performances but for predominantly this is this is just a pedal I use at home and uh, for a loop pedal it's pretty much the best one out there you can get. Don't know if I would have spent the money it costs had I have bought it myself, but um, considering my sister just gave it to me, I thought, yeah, why not? Might as well just use that. Uh, and then I've got this one up here just in case. I don't actually have this plugged in at the moment, um, predominantly because we haven't been playing live recently, obviously, because of COVID, um, so I haven't used it. But I've got the Donna Noise Killer. This is just like nice backup. It's almost like your safety net. With all this going on in terms of the different sounds on my board, with the delays, the courses, and then lower down there on the bottom uh, bottom shelf if you like. 
bottom shelf, I don't know, bottom panel, um, you've got obviously the distortions. Sometimes your guitar can go crazy. Uh, I've just got this as a nice backup just to stop anything happening if required. So when I'm live, I'll probably unplug the, the RC30 and just go with the Donut noise killer. So that was my guitar rig set up. Um, it's what I use, like I say, for live recording, rehearsals, all of it really. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. Um, hopefully I'm gonna be getting a Fender Jaguar, but not too many drastic changes. Uh, but yeah, let me know what, what you think of these sort of style videos. I'm um, probably gonna do a little bit more of the sort of speaking to the camera thing. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it too. Let me know what you think. Um, and if you're new around here, please make sure you like, comment and subscribe and check out my guitar covers. I'm going to get a few more out there as well. So yeah, nice one for tuning in guys and see you later.